hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for tuning in if this is your first time here hey be sure to click on that subscribe button before you find your way out okay now let's take a moment to celebrate all of the newness around here new background yes new hair yes and new subscribers that is actually where i was getting to thank you guys we have more than tripled since the last time i sat in front of a camera i am so grateful that you're taking interest in my content thank you so much for the support thank you so much for watching and i can only pray and hope that my videos keep blessing and inspiring you in the name of jesus now let's get to the topic of today now this is a very controversial topic and i'm not so much into controversy but this is something that has blessed me personally and i won't say oh because i don't want to be controversial and all of that not you know speak about it so i'm like why not let's talk about it it's very sensitive as well and as you can already tell by the title i'm talking about when i gave my whole salary to church amen amen i'm sure you're wondering how did i survive well let's get into all of that story now so it was in 2012 if i'm right yeah i think 2012 2013 i'm actually not sure and i was in abuja at the time and i went to church one evening and you know there was a guest minister that came to preach at my local church at the time and the sermon was also powerful oh my god i had like it was as if god himself came down sat beside me i was like you need to go out and sow this seed so he spoke about you know the alabaster box, how you have to give your all, you know, you can afford to give your whole salary to church, like to God, more like to God, not even to church, but you're sowing it to God through your church. And I'm like, wait, okay. I was really led in my spirit to do this. So I'm like, okay, I went out. I'm like, I'm going to give my all. Now, prior to this time, I had sown seeds in that same church. There was a time that I moved in into an apartment with some friend in church and you know, I had about 24,000 naira on me to rock my apartment. And I went to church that evening and they were like, okay, you have to come out. So, you like, just sow something to the work of God. And I was, I felt too strong in my spirit. I needed to give that money. So I went out, I dropped it. If I had it in my bag, because the raw guy was meant to come the day after. And then when I go home, I told my friend, I'm sorry, we can't rock this house. We have to just manage it this way. And that was actually how we, you know, Stayed in the house throughout that time, but all glory to God, look a rug all around. <laughs> anyway, so back to my story. So prior to that time, what I'm trying to say is I had taken steps of faith. I had given some, I had given, but there was no time that I had given all prior to that time. So it was a really huge step of faith for me. I'm like, so how am I going to survive? You know, and all of that. Anyway, I went out and I committed that I was going to give my whole salary to church. So I get to work the next day, you know, feeling all cool. Now there was this boss that was sitting opposite my desk in the office. And normally, like, he's even so protective of his phone because we're also friends apart from him being my boss. He's so protective of his phone. Like, it is always locked. I can remember that prior to that time I had asked him for his password a lot of times just to go through pictures and he would say, no, no, no. I don't want you to see things and all of that anyway so this fateful day his phone found its way to my desk i don't know how and for some weird reasons it was open so apparently it was at the office beside my desk he went in and then like on his way in he just dropped his phone on my desk and then i came out from the restroom and then i sat down and i saw that phone on my desk open a bbm chat and i'm like okay not to pry but it's right there it's open and the message i saw was it was actually having a conversation with someone and the message I saw was, so what happened? Okay, so we're going to the same church. So apparently it was already, it was in that service the day before. And obviously this person he was chatting with too, was in that service. So I saw a message that goes, so what happens if I give my whole salary to church? How am I meant to survive all these churches? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, after that experience, I was as if, no, God came down to tell me to give my all. It was as if the devil came or whoever came and was telling me through this message that you cannot afford to give your whole salary to church. If not, you'll be hungry. So I'm like, cause that message was really discouraging. Like if I didn't know what I was doing, if I wasn't intentional about that giving, I would have just turned back from there. Nobody will know I committed, but do you understand? So I saw that message and immediately I saw that message came out and it was like, 
babes, what are you doing with my phone? He took the phone and went off and I'm like, before I could even say a word, he already took his phone and he left. So that got me thinking and I'm like, God, this has, this message has to be for a reason. Is this a sign? But then again, do you know the scripture that dropped in my mind right there while I was even still pondering on why I had to see that message? The natural mind cannot understand the things of the spirit because they are foolishness to him. And the Holy Spirit told me that you do not have a natural mind. You are different, set apart. And I'm like, wow. Like, you know, any scripture could have come up in my mind that time, but it was that scripture. So from there, I just knew that, oh, look, you better give this seat to church. So the end of the month came. I gave my whole salary to church and that was the beginning of something very spiritual in my life like it was it was a very huge leap of faith for me it wasn't easy but then again i'm here i am not dead i didn't I, I survived it and i think there's a strong scriptural backing to this video and it's as long as earth remains seed time and harvest do not cease now i know that this is an old testament scripture but I'd just like to point it out that it didn't say, oh, as long as earth remains in the Old Testament. Like, it is as long as the earth and the heavens remain. Seed, time, and harvest. You can never take that away. Now, my salary at that time, let me tell you, was 50,000 naira. Is it? Yeah, it was 50,000 naira. Yeah. Now, looking back, I'm like, 50,000 naira was what I was holding on to. What the enemy wanted to use to deprive me of the fullness of God's glory that I could be enjoying in a later time. I'm sorry, that's the trunk. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Now, there's a thought line to me that says that doesn't mean that if you didn't sow that seed, you won't be where you are today. Truth is, I actually don't know. But you know, there is a freedom that comes from sowing to God. You can never sow a miss. There is a... You, you know that you have conquered money. You know, Bible says that um, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. And what is mammon? That's the God of money. Small g God of money, you know. So even that alone is enough to give you the financial freedom and know that. You know what? If it is money or God, I will choose God any day. Because the truth is, money is one of the things that the devil has used to deprive people, steal people's destinies, you know, kill people in this world, in this present time. And I am glad every time. I don't care what anybody's saying on the internet about, you know, pastors living. Their, their judge is God. My own judge is God. So if God tells me do something, I am going to do it. And I'm not going to be there sitting around like, okay, so what would the money um, be used for? I'm just putting a drop of water in an ocean because the church already has money and all of that. No, I'm not God's accountant. I'm not God's analyst, financial analyst. I'm not about to start saying, oh, so I'm putting a drop of water in an ocean. The church is already doing well. Why do they need my money and all of that? No. It's a personal work with God. Even the pastors that spend church money, it's a personal work with God. You have to fulfill your own part of the scripture. Fulfill your own part of the promise. Fulfill your own part of your work with God. And let them, like, let God be their own judge. I'm never going to go on the internet and say things like pastors are spending church money and all of that. Because the truth is, how much have I even given to church? Before you go on the internet and judge people, ask yourself, I found out that the people that even have the ability to come out and say, oh, the pastor is spending church money. Those are the people that should have given heavily to church, right? You don't see those people on the internet saying, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's the people that don't even give. Anyway, I don't even want to go into all of that today. I'm just trying to say that financial freedom comes when you're able to conquer money. And one of the ways to conquer money is, you know, giving, giving, giving. I am so big on giving, giving to God, giving to the poor, giving to people and all of that. So I just said, let me come and share this story. I hope that this has blessed you and I hope that it will make you, you know, reflect and look within and know that, you know, God over money anytime. Thank you so much if you stayed till the end. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button. If you noticed any error or rambling in this video, you know, it's because you're just joining us. You're probably the vacuum that this channel has been missing. So do subscribe and join the family. Comment below. Let me know what you think about, you know, giving your whole salary to church and all of that. Just try to be as, you know, harmless as possible in your comments. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye. 
So it was in 2000 and 2000. 2000. Yeah, so I am not going to. Oh my god. I need to soundproof these windows. That's the solution. <laughs>